What is going on guys, it's Knives here and today we're going to be unboxing July's Beer 52. So by now we know what the box looks like, it's looking with the same dude drinking his Guinness or his stout or his porter of some kind, we're just going to get into it. So first of all, there is your top down, we've got this on top, an envelope that says you're invited and then your beer is just there. So firstly, we're going to open this envelope just to see what that is. It's going to be some kind of advertisement. Yeah, this is just a Wine 52 advertisement. 50% off your first two cases. That's £18 per month. I don't drink wine. So I think, without looking, this is chilli. Or maybe next month is chilli. But for now, we're just going to go with, I think that this is beers from Chile. So snack first and foremost, we have Soffles, Rosemary and Thyme Pitta Chips. Roasting Pitta Chips. Soffles, oven roasted Pitta Chips with olive oil. That's what they are. Doesn't say anything else. I think these will be all right. We're getting more and more normal snacks, thank fuck. Um, our second snack is Howder Masala Dippers, spiritedly spiced flatbread bites. What does that say? Each pack feeds a child in need. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm very happy to help a child in need. These are flatbread bra wow. <laughs> flatbread bites, spiced with a feisty chili, earthy cumin, and a touch of tangy turmeric. Dip them in a minty pickle or something cool and creamy. I think I'll like these. I think that's the first time ever that I thought that I would like both snacks. Maybe, it, no, I think I did that last week as well. We're just gonna say it's the first time. Right, first beer. This can is black, the rest of them are silver. Ooh. Odioza Belgian Pale Ale. Look at this can. Focus, please. It's got, focus, please. Come on. There we go. Well, no. It's got some kind of, I think that's a brewing machine. Maybe it's a time machine, who knows? And then you've got these dudes on the side that look like scientists. 5.5% alcohol, easy drinking Belgian pale ale. It's fruity and somewhat biscuity with a sweet caramel finish and a medium bitterness. Hops deliver fruity and herbal notes on top of a round body with medium carbonation. Hatha craft beer. This is cool, it looks great, but I think taste-wise, I think it'll just be average middle of the road, nothing special to be honest. The can's really cool, but it just sounds, the taste didn't sound meh to me. Beer number two is Patagonian Yeast, fermentative innovation, Patagonian IPA beer from Chile. Yeah, so I was right, this is Chile box. This is a box of beers from Chile. I don't really know how to structure that sentence. Fermented with yeast isolated from the Andes. 5.3% volume, 330 milliliters. Recipe created by yeast mummy from Patagonia yeast, Chile. The nexus between Latin America fermentative, in fermentative innovation and the rest of the world, Patagonia IPA. There's a real taste of Patagonia in this lip-smacking West Coast IPA. Slightly hazy with floral hops and bready malt. This beer will please fans of old school too with its piney resinous hop character. Beautifully balanced and supremely drinkable. I was liking the first half of this. West Coast IPA, hazy, slightly floral, whatever. I don't really care for the piney and the resinousness. Resinousness, that's quite fun to say. But we'll see. I think, again, this might be just middle of the road, but the can art, it's got a red woodpecker on there. Look at that, dude. Very nice. Number three is Fibonacci American Amber Ale from Spo. American Amber Ale, 4.6% ABV. Cerveza Spo, Spo makes you happy. There is, shit, nearly knocked the entire beers over. A little QR code, I don't know if that's focused or not. It doesn't tell you a story on this can. It's just got some uh, amber colored artwork for an amber ale. I've quite discovered, right, I don't mind an amber ale. 
I quite like darker beers now. I didn't think I did, but it turns out I do. I might even, <clears throat> I might even, should I say, switch back to the mix box because I do miss it. This one is Piquero or Piguero. I don't know whether that's a G or a Q, to be quite honest with you. Session IPA, 4% ABV, 330 milliliters. Oh, it's a Q. Piquero is the Chilean name of the Pacific Gannet, a seabird that inhabits our coast and feeds on fish, which it captures by diving from heights. This session IPA calls you to dive into a refreshing sea of hops, generously hopped with sabro. Sabro is a quite common hop. Um, I don't know whether I like it. I can't pick it out in my head for what it tastes like, but we'll see. On there, you've got a picture that looks like a watercolor painting of the seabird. It looks like it's upside down, but that's it's not, it's just a can art. I think this one is gonna be the best one so far out of the four that we've looked at. This one is Hather Craft Beer Estalida Bison. No hay revolution, sin cerveza, no hay cerveza, sin mosotras. I just butchered that, and I know I did, but I don't speak the language that they speak in Chile. I want to say Spanish, but I could be wrong, so I'm not gonna, you know, choose that hill to die on. I think they speak Spanish in Chile. Correct me if I'm wrong. 4.5% alcohol. This refreshing, light and creamy bison has a dry finish with wheaty aromas of banana and cloves, plus moderate fresh herbal and floral notes with gentle hopping. This one, um, I think it's one of the German beers, the uh, the Weizen, and also the banana and cloves makes me think that it's going to be a German style beer brewed in Chile. I have no idea what it says on the front of the can. If somebody wants to translate that, please do. But it looks like it looks like they are holding a protest. She's got a loudspeaker. All these people have got beer to me and there's fists and stuff. It looks like a protest on the can. I don't know about this one. Um, this could go one of two ways. The last banana bread German style beer that we had was really nice actually. I really enjoyed it and I didn't think I would. So this could be good. This can caught my eye it is Bad News Beer Company with Chilean Pisco. 4.1% volume, 5 IBU, Pisco Sour Indian Pale Ale. Now I've said this many, many times. Sours are my favorite. Sour beer is my favorite style of beer ever. They're not very common and you can't really find them in a lot of places. And if you do, it's very, very rare. Love a sour. I'm gonna review this one for the video just because it's very rare that I get sours. And it says, Pisco Sour IPA. There's a real taste of Pisco Sour in this lip-smacking session IPA made with a late edition of Pisco and more <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and whole leaf hops to give a balanced marriage of citrus, floral, and muscatel grapes over a lightly sour, refreshing beer base. Beautifully balanced and supreme, supremely drinkable. Bad news beer company. Yeah, I think I like this. Or at least I, I hope that I like this because I do enjoy sours. I've had a few bad sours, but they're mainly good. So I think we're gonna review this one for the video. Halfway down, this is beer number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Beer number seven. Mala Influencia Collab San Simon Cerveza Vericho Cerveza It says, I need a beer Is somebody <laughs> Like, lick, look <laughs> This dude Is holding a Something that looks a lot like a joint And I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it is a joint And there's a cloud over here with a beer I'm gonna assume that this dude's joint has made this cloud, so he's high as shit, and he's also got a beer, so he's very, very happy. Which is the, the way I am the majority of the time, let's not lie. <laughs> it also says, I need beer, up there. Focus on the can. This can's very cool. It reminds me of, it reminds me of the March Equinox one that we had a couple of boxes back. I don't know why, I think it's, no, it's not the March Equinox one, I think it's the, it was the Fava Bean, Fava Bean Stout or Porter that we had in a few boxes back, which was actually nicer than I thought it was going to be. That's what this can art reminds me of. I have no idea why, it just does. The can's sick, it's got a cat on there, it's got a flaming beer, 
that could also be a joint to be fair. This little chemical thing up here, which I'm guessing, please focus on this. I just want you to focus on this. Anyway, that's a chemical thing up here, which if anybody knows what it is, it's HCCO with H is attached to it. I don't like chemistry personally. I hated chemistry at school, so I don't know what that means. But this one is very interesting. Look at that. I would prefer it very much if it focused on the cam. It almost looks Japanese. It says, I have no idea what it says. To me, it looks like it says Holly Bebe Faking Project. El Faking Project. Faking brooding can for El Faken Project, Santiago, Chile and Leeds. Session IPA, 4.8% volume. There's no taste in notes. There's, it's not giving anything away apart from it looks a little bit Japanese to me. And it's a 4.8% volume, so it's lower in percentage. I don't know what to expect from this. Down to our last four. This one is Uniqlo, Mandarina Bavaria, Single Hop, Just a Santiago, Chile. Brewed and canned in Aberdeen, blah, blah, blah. Uniqlo is a product of our experimentation with new hop varieties, the result of which have proven juicy thanks to the quantity of hops used. This beer packs in an explosion of flavors and aroma. It has a soft sensation on the palate and a refreshing finish offering gentle notes of sweet fruit. So, oh, nearly dropped it then. <laughs> There's a jester on the front of it. Right there, dude's riding a unicycle. Just chilling. I think this beer is gonna taste like mandarin, even though it doesn't say that on the side of it. It says mandarina on the front, so I'm just gonna assume that it's gonna taste like mandarin. This one looks pretty classic, if you ask me. If you said to me, draw an American style beer, I'd come up with something like this. It's very minimalist. It's, you know, it just looks like a beer. Stavapiola, Czech lager. Stava Piola is a refreshing Czech lager to keep you cool on a summer's day. Golden in colour with good foaming, with a good, f what? Golden in colour with a, uh, wow. My brain does not want to fucking get this structure right. It says, golden in colour and with good foaming, this lager presents itself with a rich aroma of bread and slight spiciness from the hops. Similar, similarly on the palate, you'll notice that sweetness coming from the malts is balanced with a medium high bitterness giving this beer a long round finish. 5.5% volume, 330 milliliters. Uh, actually the can's pretty cool. I don't know if it shows up on the, on the video, but there's like flowers in the background of the can. They're very faint. They're almost, it looks like it's just a plain white background, but it's actually gray with white flowers on it, which is quite nice but it is just a lager so i just think it'll be meh i haven't had a really good lager in this box or in any box i've had this one is bicyclo hazy ipa mandarina b and citra is that the hops that it used so this is from the same brewing company as this one this one is mandarina and this one is this one also says mandarina and citra. So that must be the hop that, that's used, right? I kind of think the jester looks a little bit like Shrek. It's not gonna focus on him, and if it does, it's just not gonna do it justice, but I think the jester looks like Shrek. Anyway, 7.4% hazy IPA. Bicyclo is an ultra hoppy hazy IPA, which we developed to test new hop combinations. This time we use Mandarina, Bavaria and Citra, an amazing combination that when working in tandem reveals new profiles in each hop that allow unsung heroes of flavour and aroma to take centre stage. How do you perceive it? Keep cold and drink soon. I don't know about this. This one is, what did I say it was? 7.4%, so this one's gonna be strong. Hopefully it doesn't just taste like straight alcohol. I don't. I've had a lot of IPAs and DIPAs. They're just not enjoyable because they're just too bitter, 
too alcohol forward and there's not really any flavour to it whereas I've had other DIPAs and IPAs that have been high percentage volumes I think I can't remember which one it was I think it was Decennium Falcon and then there was also Rooster Summer or other which were high percentage IPAs but they were actually really very nice so it can be done where you have high percentage and also great flavour but something about this one is telling me that it's got the high percentage and I think it's just going to be too bitter, too alcohol forward for me, but I'm prejudging. And last but not least, double session IPA in a comic book font. That looks cool to me. It says, El Fakin Project presents double session IPA. Double session IPA is 6.2% volume. And again, there's no story on the can. It just says says what it says it's got some kind of comic strippy type stuff in the background there no pictures it's just got words like pow and zoom and crash and stuff like that but again at 6.2 percent volume this could go one of two ways it could be just all right or it could just be bad i guess we'll see i um uh, i'm not too hopeful about this month's box i'll be completely honest with you i don't know if i'm gonna like a lot of these but the one that we are going to be reviewing, I've already made up my mind with this. I know I pick and change sometimes, but we are going to be reviewing the Pisco Sour. So I'm going to put these in the fridge right now and probably come back to it tomorrow. But, you know, for you, it's going to be a split second. So stick around for that. Before we get into that, actually, we have the Ferment magazine. And I've been bitching for the past couple of months that they took out the tasting notes. And I didn't like it anymore because I don't read the magazine. The only reason that I flipped through it was to get to the tasting notes and they took them out. They are now online. So if you go to your Beer 52 profile and you click on your beers, it now shows you the tasting notes if you click on it, which is great. Love that. Perfect. I don't see the need for the magazine anymore, in my opinion. If, if it were me, I'd scrap the magazine, drop the price by a couple of quid and put the magazine online my opinion anyway to the beer hello it's exactly one week later i don't think a beer 52 box has ever lasted me a week in my life but i haven't been at home so that's probably why i can't even say probably today <laughs> so we are drinking the bad news beer company pisco sour indian pale ale if that's gonna focus i don't think it will because the can is frosty this one is a sour like it says on the tin with Chilean Pisco, 4.1% volume, 5 IBU, 330 milliliters, Pisco Sour IPA. There's a real taste of Pisco Sour in this lip smacking session IPA made with late addition of Pisco and whole leaf hops to give a balanced marriage of citrus, floral, and muscatel ga gapes, crepes over a lightly sour and refreshing beer base. Beautifully balanced and supremely drinkable. And then on the front there, there is a picture of grapes like I showed you earlier. The can art for this, I I don't know. It's a little bit confusing to me. Um, the grape makes it look old fashioned. The little squiggles and the font make it look old fashioned. And then the Bad News Beer Company up there is in a different style of font again, which I don't think matches the entire vibe of the can. But that is what it is. There's some more fruit back here. The ingredients are water, barley, wheat, oats, hops, yeast, pisco. Allergens include gluten, shown in bold, which they are indeed shown in bold. Whether you can read them or not is a different story. You probably can't from that. But anyway, without further ado, white grapey if you know what I mean white grape to me smells a little bit like piss it reminds me of elderflower which I think smells like piss and tastes and well, I don't know what piss tastes like so I can't say it tastes like piss but that's what I imagine piss tastes like <laughs> yeah it reminds me of like I don't this is very specific again um white grape schlur I think it's schlur adult soft drink that's white grape flavored that's what this smells like 
I do hope it's sour. If it's not sour, I'm gonna be really disappointed. Cheers. That's definitely sour. That is sour. Oh, that's good. That is very good. I am very pleasantly surprised. Yes, I'm very happy with this beer. <laughs> right, so yes, immediately. Definitely very sour. I was getting the grapey taste at first, which is... I don't dislike it, but it's not my favourite. I do prefer a purple grape over a white grape. Like I said before, white grape reminds me of elderflower, which reminds me of piss. Which is not a great, you know, trickle-down flavour profile that you really want in your life unless that's what you're into but personally for me it's not what I want this on the other hand now that the sourness is depleted I'm getting a pleasant sweetness that's not too sweet with a lot of the sours I've found they generally tend to be quite fruity and they generally tend to be very very sweet and as much tartness as they put in there the aftertaste is always not always but very often too sweet so by the time you get to the end of the glass you're thinking you're feeling a bit sick and you might have enjoyed it but you don't really want another one uh. and the burp tastes really grapey the burp, <laughs> the burp tastes pretty good yeah I do like that it doesn't taste like beer to me maybe slightly slightly little bit of beer in there but not really the flavor Sour is not really a flavour, but the sourness definitely hits you. It's refreshing in a way. My brain went to cucumber then, which it doesn't taste like cucumber, but the refreshing side of it and a little bit of the aftertaste, it's probably the white grape. I don't drink or eat a lot of white grape flavoured things. And I also don't think that white grape flavoured things taste like actual white grapes. So that's a different conversation to be had, but this... I'm getting little bits of cucumber on the back end, which is not a thing that I dislike, but it's not a thing that I expected. It's very interesting. It's different to any sour that I've had before. It's not very beery, but I'm honestly not too bothered about this. I would give this, what's it called? Fisco Sour from the Bad News Beer Company. An 8 out of 10. It's very nice. It's not quite a 10 because it could be better, but it's very, very nice. So, if you like this video, leave a like, leave me a comment telling me if you enjoyed this month's Beer 52 box, what was your favourite beer in the box? If you haven't had a Beer 52 box, you can get 50% off with the pinned comment link. Go ahead and do that. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.